The team at Dungarees know the hardest workers pack the biggest appetites. They've teamed up with me, Chef Jonathan Collins from The Outdoor Chef, to bring you simple, handcrafted recipes for hardworking men and women. Whether you're hosting the big game or cooking for an entire campsite, maybe you're cooking something that you've recently hunted or firing up the barbecue in the backyard, we've got recipes that hungry people will love to cook and eat. Today's recipe was written with game night in mind. We know that sports fans love their food almost as much as their team. That's why we wrote a recipe that serves large groups of people, holds really well, and is full of flavor. If you've got sports nuts in your family, they'll love it as much as mine do. is all about satisfying the cravings of hungry sports fans and let's face it if you can make it ahead that means you get to watch the game too I'm gonna make a wild elk chili with cast iron cornbread the great thing about this recipe is the cornbread can be on the oven with the chili ready to serve at any time doesn't matter if the score is high or low this recipe will be a win for you With the elk ground, I'm now ready to start working on my chili base. Now keep in mind, this could be beef, it could be chicken, it could be turkey, but this wild elk is gonna really be powerful. The way I'm gonna start my base is by using some strip bacon, literally gonna chop it up into little four to five millimeter pieces, saute it, and the one thing that I love about making chili is everything is in one pan. So I start the base in the pan, I'll finish the base in the pan, then the elk goes in, my flavor base, tomatoes, everything goes in one big chili pot. With the bacon sauteed and all the extra fat removed, I can go in with the wild elk. It's really important that that pan is still smoking hot. You can see that incredible color from the elk, and now is the time to season. Keep in mind that the bacon is salted, so you won't need quite as much salt as you would normally, but in this case, you wanna add the salt and get that seasoning right at this time. With the elk completely sauteed and nicely browned, I've got all kinds of flavor development there. So I've got the elements finished and now the vegetables are ready. The vegetables back into a hot pan. And the reason that I do this with each one of the ingredients, sure, I could put them all together, but every time I take the time to saute, develop flavor and add caramelization, what that means in the end is an incredibly flavored chili.
With the vegetables sauteing nicely, they're very fragrant and developing flavor. It's time to use the tomato paste. Now the tomato paste is one of the things that if you start doing this, you're gonna get a really rich, dark sauce. So taking the tomato paste, which is a raw product, go directly into the bottom of that hot pan. And because it is raw, you wanna make sure to cook it. So I'm gonna use, because I'm using cast iron, I've got all that residual heat. So while that starts to cook, I'm gonna move that around a little bit. What you get is a thick, tomatoey, brown, rich sauce, and that just elevates the flavor of this incredible wild elk chili. Now this is when the people in your house are gonna come running. The fragrance of activating these spices with the heat is key. Make sure you put it in when the pan is hot just like this and what you're creating basically is a little paste. And then all that flavor development on the bottom of the pan, we get that off with the use of beer. You can use wine, but look at this. We're deglazing and anything that's left on the bottom of that pan, well, let me tell you, it just came off. The chicken stock is a really key flavor ingredient, and you might think, well, that's a little liquid. Reduction is the key. So you wanna take that amount of liquid and concentrate it. When you concentrate it, you're concentrating the flavor and giving yourself that extra element of flavor that's gonna make an outstanding chili. Now I've got a cast iron grill pan in front of me that I'm gonna use for the cornbread. While your chili is reducing, the perfect thing to do is to make a little side. You can do this in a loaf pan, in a baking pan, but the reason that I love these nice little wedge pans is because it develops all kinds of that corn sweet crust that you're gonna love. Cornbread is ready to go in the oven. 325 degrees Fahrenheit. And one of the things I want to talk to you about is the fact that both the cornbread and the chili can be made ahead of time and can be frozen. So if you really want to get this work done ahead of time, why not make it a couple weeks in advance? I find, especially with things like this chili, that when you freeze them and then bring them back up to temperature, the taste is even better. Enough talk, let's get this in the oven. With my cornbread golden brown, and it smells so incredible, the corn, the honey, it's amazing. In the time it takes me to do three or four batches, plenty of wedges for a big group, the chili is perfectly reduced. If you've got a game night ahead of you, I guarantee you, this wild elk chili with cast iron cornbread is just the ticket. Thanks for checking out this recipe. You can download a printable version of the full recipe by going to dungarees.com backslash recipes. And don't forget to check out the other recipes in this delicious series. Until then, remember, in the kitchen, slow is smooth and smooth is fast.